Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In my videos on creating your own band reject filter using coax, I emphasized how important it was to know the velocity factor of your coax. I talked about measuring it with all your adapters and everything in place. So here I was in the midst of developing the video on creating a band reject filter using a shorted stub and I realized that I was using an alternate method of measuring the velocity factor of my coax for the stubs that was different than any of those that I presented in my video series on the subject. And then I realized that this alternate method lends itself much better to this application. Then I thought, hmm, I have to show folks how I'm doing this right away. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so let's dive into this. This method requires a VNA, like a nano VNA, like you see here, or a mini VNA tiny, or even a higher end VNA like my Tektronix TTR503A. I will be demonstrating this using my nano VNA and the PC software. You cannot do this with an antenna analyzer, at least none that I know of. So here is the hardware setup. My VNA port one is connected to one side of a BNCT. My VNA port two is connected to the other side of my BNCT. I have a representative piece of coax, which is about the same length that I think that the stub will be connected to the third port of the BNCT. Now, if there's any adapters and the like that will be connected to the other end of the stub, they should be connected to the other end of the stub. This includes the complete assembly, the BNCT, any connectors or adapters that exist here, the coax, the connectors, adapters, and then we leave the far end of the stub open, just like you see here. Now we're ready to start the process. We will be measuring the velocity factor of the complete assembly from the BNCT through whatever connectors might be in here, through the coax, through whatever connectors might be at the end or adapters as well. The VNA is set up to measure S21, which is also known as response, insertion loss, or through, the specific terminology that is used depends on the particular VNA. We are measuring the signal that starts at port one and gets to port through, through whatever is in between them. So let's step through this process. Step one, physically measure the length of the stub from the center of the BNCT to the reference plane of the end connector or the end of the coax that is cut off. So in our case, we take our measurement here. The reference plane of this connector is about here. And it measures 14.75 inches or 37.5 centimeters. Step two, calculate the frequency at which the stub will be one quarter wavelength, assuming the ideal velocity factor is procured from the coax data sheet. We use the equation the speed of light times the velocity factor from the data sheet times 0.25, all divided by the physical length. The speed of light must be in the same units that you use to measure the physical length of the coax. Because I used inches for my measurement, I will use 11,802.85 mega inches per second for my speed of light. The velocity factor from the data sheet is 0.66 for this coax, and this gives me a frequency of 132.03 megahertz. Step three, set the center frequency of the VNA at the calculated frequency 
and the span wide enough to capture variations, maybe plus or minus 10%. With my frequency of 132 megahertz, I will set my span to 2 times 10% of that, which is 13.2, which equals 26.4 megahertz. So here, the center frequency, I am going to set for 132. And the span, I am going to set for 26 point four meg. You will notice that I set the segments at 20. That way I would get a lot of points along this trace. Step four. Sweep the assembly and using the marker function in the software determine the frequency at which the S21 value is as low as possible. So we grab our marker here and we drag it down to the lowest spot. And that looks like that's pretty much it. That's marker one. And we get 133.942 megahertz. Step five, set the sweep so that this new frequency is at the center with a span of about 2% of the frequency. In my case, we sit at about 134 megahertz, so the center is 134 megahertz, and the span is about 2.68 megahertz. We'll call this 3 megahertz. Now we have to go through the calibration procedure on the VNA, so our final measurement will be as accurate as possible. Which brings us to step six. Disconnect your VNA from the BNCT and perform a full through calibration. I'm using my end type open short and load. I'm using a BNC female to female adapter and I have an additional BNC load here. The part where they ask you to terminate both ports with a 50 ohm termination is for the isolation portion of the calibration. Step 7. Reconnect your VNA to the BNCT and determine the frequency at which the S21 reading is as low as possible using the marker function in the Nano VNA software. Alright, so I'm going to be moving marker 1, which is this one here. I am going to be looking at S21 gain. Right now it's minus 33.884. And so now I'm moving my marker along, looking for that spot where that's as low as I can get at 34.43. There we go. That's pretty good right there. 34.482 dB is to be found at 133.959 megahertz. Step 8. Calculate the velocity factor of the stub, including the BNCT and all adapters associated with it. We use the formula the physical length times the frequency that we just determined, all divided by the speed of light times 0.25. And the frequency we had was 133.959 megahertz. The physical length is 14.75 inches. And with my length measured in inches, I will use 11,802.85 mega inches per second for the speed of light. This gives me a velocity factor of 0.6696 for this stub 
which includes the coax itself, the BNCT at the top, the connectors, the adapters, everything for this entire stub. So there you go. Yeah, one more way to measure the velocity factor of your coax and, well, it includes all of the adapters and connectors and everything. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots!